uh, have I you not uh, audible? about now okay sorry for that and thank you uh okay uh, hello everyone uh good morning good evening um welcome to cncf tag grant time meeting today is august 17th um and um uh, we have a very light agenda it's only one uh, uh one project to be uh presented today uh i encourage you to add your name to uh to the agenda meeting and here's the link. Oh, thank you. Um, and um, just before um, before starting the meeting, let's uh, let's remind ourselves that the, uh, this meeting uh, um, is recorded and under uh, CNCF code of conduct, which means be nice, be kind to each other. Uh, and uh, please, if you have any comments or any questions, let's uh, have them in the chat and. Um, uh, we can start and handing it over to you, Wang, right? With the project uh, coordinator, right? Okay. Uh, can yeah. you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Are you able to share your screen or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, could you see my share screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Today, I would like to make this presentation for Coordinator, uh, which is a cloud native project that has been open sourced about one year and a half. Generally, we are using Kubernetes to manage those machines, hardware, and resources below, and then pro provide the computing abilities for upper applications. Nowadays, the hardware devices are more and more diversified, such as common CPU, memory, and GPU, MPU, RDMA, and uh, FGGA. The applications for general computing, web, web services, big data, AI jobs. Different applications might have different priorities and they require different hardware. It's difficult for those cluster administrators and SRE to manage and schedule so many different kinds of applications and devices to guarantee their QS, resource utility, utilization, and uh, safe isolation. The thing we, are, we were going to do is to make all these different workloads to uh, collocation with each other. So we named this project coordinator and K for Kubernetes. A coordinator's goal is to provide the flexible scheduling policies, improve resource utilization, enhance workload performance, and make easy integration. You can see now coordinator has some core components, a scheduler, a descheduler, a manager for controllers and webhooks, and a correlate on each node. A key design of coordinator is its resource model. It defines four priorities for different workloads. Prod for latency sensitive services, mid for streaming job or new line jobs, batch for offline batch jobs, for example, data free for offline testing jobs. With the resource commitment, uh, different priorities for different runtime queues. And uh, we can find if the prod support has low, lower usage, the resources we can allocate it for batch ports or batch services, batch jobs. But once the usage of prod has gone higher and the resources will be throttled or cured uh, to avoid the resource contention. Uh, this is our uh, resource mode. And then with the uh, runtime queues, we also bring fine-grained fine resource isolation. 
which can especially isolate for those shared resources, such as CPU ARC, memory bandwidth, block IO, or network. We also provide a dynamic resource turning, which could adjust the resource quota by running status of node and port, and surprise or kill batch workloads to avoid resource contention. Here, I will give some samples to show how coordinator manages and schedules different kinds of application and devices with different priorities. The sample one is CPU suppress. You can see the CPU resource of a node is divided into different pieces of for blue for latency sensitive ports and yellow for dynamic, uh, yellow is dynamic for BE. LS ports could run all, on all CPUs, while your BE ports can only run on some specific CPUs which is determined by the load of the ARS ports, which is to avoid resource computation, competition. Sample two is load aware scheduling, which is easy to understand. The correlate, the correlate uh, on node will get ports information from Kubernetes API and report metrics of resources usage for node and ports. Call scheduler will get them, and the schedule ports depends on these metrics. For example, uh, filter high load nodes, fairness of resource utilization based on queues aware, or optimize scheduling in concurrent and co nodes situations. You can see uh, with the strategy, we could make the load line of nodes more smooth. Sample three is elastic quota scheduling. It's designed to mainly meet these requirements. Fair sharing of available capacity between multiple tenants and able to set policies, the min and max requests, which are the guaranteed resources and the max resource it can up to, the min and the max. The feature is compatible with the upstream Elastic Quota CRD, and we extend it to B3 structure so that users can divide the root quota node and uh, divide them into child nodes or leaves. And what's more, it supports uh, fair sharing and a comfortable shared weight. Sample four is fine-grained device scheduling. The device, could, the, device could be the device could the be device. GPU, uh, sorry. Okay. The device could be GPU, RDMA card, or virtual devices such as VF for SROV. Codlet will get information uh, from uh, those devices and report them into device CRD. Cost scheduler is responsible for scheduling and allocating these devices for ports. Currently, we use a component named runtime proxy, which is actually a CRI proxy to hook the CRI requests and inject the device allocation and the configuration into the containers. Uh, speak of this, you may find the runtime proxy is a little weird, which has to be deployed and hooked between Kubelet and the real container runtime, such as container D or Scry. So this is what we are doing. We find NRI, full name is Node Resource Interface, interface which is a sub-project and the interface defined by container D community. NI is the standard API to let users register hooks for CRI or OCR requests. You can see with NI, we could register us to be an NI plugin to container D or CRM. 
instead of adding a pro CI proxy between them. No, uh, sorry totally to interrupt you. Sorry to interrupt you, but the the, the image is not clear. Um, uh, sorry. Yeah, it's a little bit whitey. You know, like it's uh, very very um, yeah. The background is uh, is white. Yeah, Probably. this is more much better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so with the with the NLI, we can re register us as the NLI plugin into uh, container D or client instead of adding the CI proxy between the couplet or uh, the real CI runtime. Uh, this way, what we are doing, and uh, we are uh, cooperator with the container D community to to, to achieve this. And uh, here's the demo. Uh, here is a Spark application on Kubernetes. The Spark community provides a Spark application CRD. People can use the Kube controller or Spark controller to submit the uh, Spark application CRD, in which usually we have to, to set the CPU uh, and memory for resources. But uh, when you run a Spark using coordinate, coordinator batch resources, we can deploy Spark with latency sensitive applications. The, so that we have to set the requests or limits uh, to use the batch CPU or batch memory. The port of la latency sensitive application requests all resources as a Kubernetes as Kubernetes native fields, but the latency sensitive applications may not actually use all, so that the Spark can use more resource than its declaration. You can see after collocation, the CPU, the CPU utilization is, is more optimized than before collocation. So the community, so we have publicly known adopters uh, such as Xiaohongshu, Aichi, and uh, such other uh, Chiwan, Dou. Uh, we have uh, com contributing and uh, sponsoring organizations. And our version uh, has alpha and beta from, the, uh, from uh, alpha beta versions to stable versions. Uh, mm -hmm. We released uh, the V1.0 last year, uh, December. And yesterday, we have just announced the V1.3. In the end, this is some, these are some links. Uh, the GitHub organization, GitHub main project, on our website. And uh, this topic is we talked uh, uh, last year on KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. This topic is we we are uh, uh, we will going to speak in the uh, on the uh, Kubicon and Cognitive Con next month. Okay, this is the presentation. Thank you so much uh, for the presentation. I I just have a question related to the scheduling board and the the. the the hardware allocation. So does this mean that you, you know, like, can, can you talk more about how you allocate like the hardware behind behind the scene? Is it like you are responsible for that? Or um, what did the, the, you know, like, what is the, the piece of code or, you know, like the, the application, you know, like the part that responsible for allocation the hardware or the node? Uh, 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 do, you, do you mean this this picture? Yeah, or... but if if you can if you can make it in slideshow mode because it's not clear. Yeah. All right. Uh, the collate will will report the the uh, devices such as GPU, uh, MV switch, uh, RDMA cards, uh, we have uh, for SRV to okay. the device CRD. A CRD is defined by a coordinator. It is to extend the, the node resources uh, so that we can, uh, we can report uh, more devices and their information into the CRD. With this CRD, 
the call manager uh, and the call scheduler, uh, and especially the call scheduler, will schedule ports according to the devices, uh, such as uh, generally when, when we use GPU, uh, if we use the uh, uh, if we use the, the NVIDIA uh, device plugin, uh, we can only use the, uh, the G, G, uh, we can only allocate the GPU. Uh, but if we uh, want to allocate the GPU with the NV switch and the, those sub uh, sub devices, uh, we can do this with uh, uh, the NVIDIA original device plugin. Um, but with Colit, we can report the GPU MV switch and sometimes the MV link bandwidth to the device CRD. And the call scheduler could schedule the ports to allocate C uh, GPUs for them uh, with uh, the best result. So the CRD, uh, we, we have a, a device CRD object yeah. that define whether we wanted to use GPU or, you know, like maybe regular node or maybe spot node or something like that. And accordingly, um, uh, the cordlet will, uh, will uh, provision the node or just, you know, like have this data and, uh, you know, like you have, you have, you have to communicate with, you know, like, um, third party to, to provision. So do you have the provisioning part or it's out of the, the project scope? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't uh, get the, the your, your questions. It's about the cordlet or the device? Yeah, the, co the cordlet. Uh, so you, you, you will have like the node already set up before the hand and you just schedule the workload accordingly or you're responsible for provisioning the nodes as well uh, for creating uh, the nodes. Uh, as if I understand correctly, uh, you mean it is uh, responsible for provisioning the, the node resources, uh, including the devices. Okay, so you, the cordlet uh, can provision the node with the required resources, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, I have another question regards the scheduler. So we already have a couple of plugins, as you mentioned, like the Elastic, uh, the Elastic uh, scheduler plugin, and you know, like um, Elastic Quota and other plugins yeah. to to yeah. help us with you know, like resource management. What Cordlet scheduler can provide more than these plugins? Is it like? You know, like for example, the Elastic Quota plugin, it's just, you know, like uh, according to the CPU and memory, you are, you know, like you're dedicating in this CRD, the default scheduler will already do that. So, what the core scheduler can, you know, like provide more than this? What the optimization, uh, what the optimization that the scheduler can provide more? other than the, the plugin scheduler can already provide. Okay, uh, the cost scheduler is uh, compatible with the upstream uh, scheduler, uh, the Kubi scheduler. But based on this, uh, some of plugins we can cooperate with the Colet, such as the device uh, the device share plugin. It will use the, the Colet uh, uh, reporting the CRD, device CRD. Uh, to do the, the device share uh, scheduling. And some of other plugins, such as Elastic Quota plugin, uh, which, is, um, which is totally compatible with the upstream Elastic Quota uh, API. Uh, okay, so if I get it like, right, like, like, yeah. like, like this, like this, it is the upstream, yeah. like, upstream Elastic Quota CRT. But based on this, we could define and extend our our uh, some our annotation or labels on it uh, to achieve the tree structure or the or the shared weight. Okay, so you're that, providing mm -hmm. a new a new plugin, right? It's the device plugin. 
a device yeah. like a scheduler plugin, a new scheduler plugin called device plugin, right? So you're using yeah. the default scheduler, but just um, you implemented uh, one more plugin. Is that right? Not like a brand new schedule. Uh, the core scheduler is uh, developed uh, based on the upstream scheduling framework. Uh, but it could uh, it could uh, it could work uh, on, uh, without the curve scheduler. It is it could be the only one scheduler in the cluster. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Uh, anyone has any question? Uh, the floor. Yeah. Okay, Rajesh. Yep. Uh, so I had a follow-up question on the card scheduler as well. So out of curiosity, um, yep. Yeah, first of all, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, so th that was great. Uh, the, my question is regarding uh, the customized plugins that you're adding to the card scheduler. Um, is are are you also is the project also thinking of adding other customizable plugins like to support wasm workloads or is that on the roadmap as well like um like are other customized plugins on the roadmap uh, I, I, i'm sorry i don't get your uh, could could you could you could you could you explain your question sure uh, so, um, so if I, uh, yep so so if i understand correctly uh the current uh plugins like the device share plugin that's added to the core scheduler this mostly works with say gpu workloads or workloads to run ai uh, models or something along those lines uh is there uh is is wasm workload or a plugin to support wasm workloads or anything other than gpu workloads also on the roadmap that's the question yeah yeah uh our collate of the device share plugin and the device CRD are, are uh, extendable. Uh, with, currently, we support GPU, uh, MSWitch, RDMA card, or the FPGA. But uh, we can, uh, but it, it by design, it can support more uh, devices, and uh, we we welcome anyone to uh, to to go in our in our community and uh, share their devices as uh, a simulation and, uh, and 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 and, uh, and and with their device we can support more more devices in the in the coordinator uh, not sure if i answer answer your question yeah so, so it's it's extensible so there is scope for it yeah 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 Any other questions? All right. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, um, this that's it. But thank you so much for the presentation. It was good. It was really good. And um, um, uh, I, I would love if we can continue, you know, like um, if, if anyone has any question, we can continue after the meeting and the channel uh, to, uh, you know, like to ask question. And uh, um, but yeah, I think uh, that's it for now. Uh, if anyone has anything else uh, for I can for pass the, I can pass the I can pass the link into the agenda. Yeah, that would be great. All right. Um, with that, I think uh, we can. Uh, we don't have anything else on our agenda, so I think we can uh, end our meeting early today and uh, give you uh, uh, more than thirty minutes back to your time. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending, and thank you for the presentation too. And uh, see you next time. See you. Okay. Bye. Bye.